Glenn Greenwald went on Tucker Carlson's show and set the record straight on the issue of Russia. Let's watch. It said, quote, the CIA has concluded in a secret assessment that Russia intervened in the 2016 election to help Donald Trump win the presidency. That sentence right there changed everything here in Washington. Should we believe that assessment? We should be extremely skeptical of it for multiple reasons. To begin with, this is a secondhand report, so you have somebody whose identity is being shielded describing what the CIA supposedly concluded, laundering that through the Washington Post. These are assertions that are being made completely unaccompanied by any evidence whatsoever, let alone evidence that we can touch and, and rationally review. Um, there's all kinds of reasons to suspect the CIA statements, including the fact that they're wrong all the time. Um, they're programmed in a lot of cases to disseminate disinformation, and there's lots yeah. of reasons to view them as political actors. Um, and so I think we ought to be highly skeptical. But what's interesting, I agree with that assessment completely. I mean, they're sometimes right, they're sometimes wrong, but they're certainly skilled in deception. That's what they do. And yet, politically, here in Washington, the response has been, well, if you don't believe this account of an account of analysis by the CIA, you're somehow acting on behalf of the Kremlin, or you're not patriotic, or you're insulting the memory of the CIA officers who've died in the line of duty. Have you seen that kind of response before? I saw it from... Um, a Democratic congressman, Adam Schiff, actually, when, when you interviewed him last week and all you were doing was asking him for evidence and he, he told you you should go to put your show on RT. Um, and in my journalism, this is the response I've been getting for many months now as, as not even... Um, not even when you deny that it happened. I mean, nobody should deny that Russia might have done this. Of course Russia might have done this. Um, this is the right. kind of thing that all states do, and, and certainly Russia. But all you do is ask for evidence before believing it, before embracing it as true. And that alone sub sub subjects you to accusations that you might be disloyal, that you're somehow a, a tool of the Kremlin. Um, it's a really toxic environment that I think Democrats have created, a little bit out of desperation and out of political um, maneuvering as well. But but it is quite dangerous. Well, it is so weird that Russia is the focus. I, I mean, speaking for myself, I'm agnostic on Russia. I don't speak Russian. I've never been to the country. I don't have strong feelings about it one way or the other. I'm willing to believe anything, basically. I'm open-minded. And yet, all of a sudden, Russia seems to be villain number one. Why is that? It seems strange. You know, one... One of the really interesting things is in 2012, um, when Mitt Romney ran against Barack Obama, the Democrats mocked uh, Romney mercilessly for depicting Russia as the number one geopolitical threat. And they p released a video saying uh, Mitt Romney's stuck in the Cold War. He doesn't understand the 21st century. Obama in the debate said the 1980s want their foreign policy back to think that Russia is this grave threat. Um, it, and, and throughout the Obama presidency, he tried accommodating Putin. He, he didn't arm anti-Russian yeah. factions in Ukraine. He tried to cooperate with him in, in Syria. It was really an election year political um, theme that the Democrats manufactured out of whole cloth that the Russians, that Putin posed some sort of existential threat to the United States, that they're our enemy, our entrenched enemy, and we all have the patriotic duty to resist it. And, and it's not working. Um, the Americans don't wake up and worry about Vladimir Putin, but Democrats seem to be digging in further into this losing political attempt. Sound like you love Vladimir Putin to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sound like you love Russia. That's what I think. Maybe you guys should just go to Russia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we're laughing, but a lot of people have been saying that. Not only to him, but uh, Greenwald, I mean, but also to me and also to anybody else who, man who says, Hey, you know, maybe the CIA isn't that trustworthy. <laughs> the CIA, they are known for organizing death squads. And overthrowing democratic governments and putting in fascist puppets for our corporations. They're most recently known for what? Torturing. Torturing, and by the way, getting... It, they admit at least 20% of the people we torture totally innocent. So this is not, you know... This is not an organization or an agency that really cares about all the details and information and is just objective and fact finders, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> CIA is so trustworthy. But now to partisan Democrats, it's CIA said it. That's it. It's over. The CIA said it. The CIA said it with anonymous sources. They already have no credibility, and then they're going to use anonymous sources. Forgive me for being skeptical. Now, again, I agree with Glenn Greenwald. Is it possible that uh, Russia was involved? Sure. Sure. But I'm going to need a little evidence, bitch. 
and they have presented none of it. How soon we forget. Every Democrat in the country after the Iraq war went, oh man, whoa, whoa, here's the deal. Anytime any government agency makes any claim, we need evidence. Because if we don't have evidence, look what happens. We just wage an offensive war against a country that didn't attack us, didn't even have WMDs, and we occupied the country, hundreds of thousands of civilians died, we set up a worldwide torture regime, we always need evidence. Now, fast forward to today, because the, the Democratic candidate you want loses, the CIA goes, well, maybe we can blame it on Russia. They go, that's right, Russia, it's all Russia. It's all James Comey, the FBI, it's all Russia, it's all Jill Stein, it's all Gary Johnson, it's all the voters themselves, it's all it's sexism, Bernie bros, yada yada, blame it. do I feel better about myself yet? Have I obfuscated enough and rationalized enough and deflected enough? So, um... It is true, though, let's be clear, that there is hypocrisy on both sides over this Russia thing. Because the Republicans were hawks until, like, yesterday. <laughs> like, oh, Russia, yeah, we, no, we gotta get involved, and we gotta step up in Crimea, and we gotta take back Crimea, and we gotta, you know, put NATO right on the border of Russia, and do more sanctions, and escalate to war, and that'd be great, let's totally do that. And then now, everybody's like, Russia, Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin's a strong character who's fighting ISIS, and... Yeah, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with Vladimir Putin. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so there's Republican hypocrisy too. But there's Democratic hypocrisy as well, as we just went over. And it is true that in 2012, I remember, you know, Obama mocking Romney over this. He, Romney's like, yeah, we, you know, we basically started the new Cold War again. And Obama's like, <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> no, we haven't. What are you, the 1980s called? They want their foreign policy back. It was in the same debate that I think Obama did the famous horses and bayonets jab at Romney. Our military's weak. Our military's weak. No, it's not. We have fewer horses and bayonets along with fewer air carriers because we don't need them as much. So anyway, um, the hypocrisy is driving me crazy. But the final thing I want to bring up on this is, yes, demand evidence. Always demand evidence. It's certainly possible Russia was involved. But now let's get to the point of even if they were involved... So everybody's using this phrase, Russia hacked the election. Russia hacked the election. When I say that to you, if you're coming to this uh, conversation, you don't know, um, you don't know all the details. What comes to your mind when you hear Russia hacked the election? What comes to mind is they hacked the voting machines and turned it over to their preferred candidate, Donald Trump. I mean, that's the implication of the phrase, Russia hacked the election. That is grotesquely misleading. Because that's not even the claim being made. The claim being made is they hacked the DNC emails, gave them to WikiLeaks, and WikiLeaks ran those DNC emails. Well, I have a radical position on this. How about we should have seen those emails anyway, regardless of who fucking hacked them? Now, yes, the DNC and everybody in the U.S., step up your fucking cybersecurity game, you idiots. I don't want anybody getting hacked, okay? Okay. I mean, I think things should be open to transparency, like DNC emails and stuff, but I want that to be codified in law. I don't want that to be hidden and then hacked to get it. So step up your cybersecurity, and I'm not pro-hacking, but let's just be clear. That's information we should have known. We also should have known the RNC emails. We, all, we should treat candidates like they're already in government. So President Obama, we're going to see his emails eventually one day, unless they're super-duper top-secret classified, because they get declassified at some point. So, and that's because he's president. So we go, oh, we have a right because we pay your salary and you represent us. That eventually we get to see it because it's transparency in government. That's what a democracy does. Same thing should apply to the DNC, the RNC, and every candidate running for office. You should abide by the rules as if you're already in there. So the worst claim is maybe they hacked the election, hacked the election. They got the DNC emails, gave them to WikiLeaks, and WikiLeaks ran with it. Now, Julian Assange says Russia was not his source. So I don't know what to believe. But either way, we should have seen those, and this entire conversation of Russia hacked the election, Russia hacked the election, Russia hacked the election, what does that do? It deflects from the conversation of what was in the emails, what was in the leaks. The leaks showed the DNC is a disgusting, corrupt organization. The leaks showed that they smeared Bernie Sanders, they con controlled the media, Debbie Wasserman Schultz scolded MSNBC host, and I'm going to speak to your boss for speaking out against me and Hillary. It showed that Hillary Clinton herself with her speeches, hey, I think politicians should have public positions and different private positions. 
These are the things that exposed. So now instead of talking about Democratic corruption, because they can't talk about that because they have no response, the Democrats all have to go, oh, I guess you're on the side of Russia if you want to talk about it. It's watching Democrats turn into Republicans in real time. That's what it is. And that's a really sick thing to see. So the liberal wing, the progressive wing of the party has to take over or the Democrats are going to keep fucking losing. And I got news for you. You ain't going to coast to an election victory screaming Russia hacked the election because your fear mongering isn't working. And if anybody just goes beneath the surface a little bit, they go, oh, you all you mean is that the DNC emails that were released and that we learned about what we should have known anyway. Oh, how terrible that is. Your fear mongering is going to work and it shouldn't.